Hey, welcome to another great Fear No Fix video right here on our Blue Driver channel. Today, we're handling the transfer case motor for a four-wheel drive version of this 2005 Chevy 5.3 liter engine, four-wheel drive, of course. So oftentimes, you're not gonna get a check engine light for this one. It's actually a trouble code, and so if you have a C0327, we know that you have a Blue Driver because only a Blue Driver can read this code. Not related to your missions, it controls your four-wheel drive. Also, in your display center, your message display center, you may see it say service four-wheel drive, or your four-wheel drive light will come on, or your four-wheel drive will not work at all. So you don't have to have a scan tool to see this, but you'll definitely see a C0327 on this one. Chris, what do we have looking at us? It's not too hard a job. It takes a bit of time. We'll be working under the truck about midway back on the driver's side. Now, if you have another four-wheel drive vehicle, like say an Avalanche, some SUVs, and your four-wheel drive's not working, there's a good chance this is the culprit there as well. All right, so this repair should take you just over an hour, a little bit of dirt, a little bit of sweat. You might need some really nice gloves to keep your hands in good shape. Uh, while you're doing this, it's a little difficult working position sometimes. Hopefully this video does save you a bunch of money. If you like it and it does help you out, please like the video and you can subscribe to us on uh, the Blue Driver channel. Let's get at it. The tools you'll need to complete the replacement of the transfer case motor are an 11 millimeter socket, a 15 millimeter socket, a 3 8 inch ratchet, a 3 8 inch torque wrench, a flathead screwdriver, vice grips, a pry bar or long screwdriver, and wheel chocks. The new encoder is going to come set up for the transfer case to be in neutral. Right now, we're in too high. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to put the transfer case in neutral. Although if you're having encoder problems, you might not be able to. If you can't, don't worry, we'll show you something else to do down the line. First we'll put the transmission in neutral. Then we're going to press and hold the two high and four high buttons for 10 seconds. If we did shift to neutral just now, the neutral light would come on, but it didn't. We're stuck in too high, so we're going to have to do something else later on. Chalk the wheels. Set the parking brake. All right, we're under the truck. Let's get started. The transfer case is right here. We've got the drive shaft going off to the rear diff that way. The front drive shaft is up there. The encoder motor is just above this skid plate right here. We'll start by removing the four 15 millimeter bolts that hold on the transfer case skid plate. Now we're gonna mark the orientation of the front drive shaft to this yoke right here. It's possible that when we take the drive shaft off, these bearing caps might come off. So mark the drive shaft itself. Now we're going to remove the clamp from the drive shaft boot right here. With the truck in too high, you can rotate the front drive shaft. So rotate it until you can access the clamp. Then take a flat bladed tool like a screwdriver, pry it underneath, twist, and remove the clamp. Now we remove the four 11 millimeter bolts that hold the yoke retainers on. You can use a pry bar wedge into the drive shaft there to stop it from turning. A word of warning before we go any further. These bearing caps here could be loose. They can fall off. If they fall off, then the roller bearings inside can fall out. And if that happens, then you're gonna have to go crawling over the place looking for them. You're gonna have to pack it full of grease. It's a huge headache. So be really careful to hold the bearing caps in place at all times and try not to let them fall off. Now at this point, we need to remove the front drive shaft from the yoke. The factory manual says that you shouldn't hammer on the ears or pry between the yoke and the U-joint. You are gonna to need to do a little bit of prying somewhere. You might also be able to just hammer backwards slightly, but depending on the age of the truck, you might have to do a little bit of prying 
just be careful. Try not to damage anything. At this point too, you should be really careful with the bearing caps. Just keep an eye on them and make sure they don't fall off. This is when you're most likely to lose your bearing caps. So we're just gonna grab some masking tape and wrap it around to make sure they can't fall off. Now we're gonna remove the front drive shaft by grabbing onto it, pushing it to the rear of the truck, and then pivoting it down and out. The connector for the transfer case encoder is sitting on top of the transfer case. It's held in place with a plastic clip. You can disconnect it by pulling up. There's a good chance you might break it. If you do, it's not such a big deal since there's a new one on the cable on the new motor. To unplug it, we'll pry down in the gray tab, press in right there. Now we'll remove the three 15 millimeter bolts that hold the transfer case motor on. One at the top, one here, one here. And then we remove the motor. This is what's keeping the four-wheel drive system from working. Oh, little trouble. Yeah, so when you remove the old motor, there is a locator pin right here, and basically it's just a little sleeve that helps you line it up properly when you go to bolt it onto the transfer case. I had a little bit of trouble removing it, and uh, I don't think we're gonna be reusing this. So we're gonna go ahead, we're not gonna have one at all. It'll just make it slightly harder to put the new transfer case encoder on. If you can get it off, reuse it, perfect. But if you do destroy it like I did, don't panic, not a big deal, we can live without it. Okay, well here's your new part. And you're gonna be reusing the gasket, yeah? Yep. Okay. So we're just gonna clean this off a little bit and then put it on the new motor. All right, we've cleaned up the mating surface. Now, because the new motor is gonna be in neutral, we need to put the transfer case in neutral. If you did successfully put it in neutral at the beginning, then you can skip this step. Otherwise, there are two ways we can do this. Have a look at this notch right here. If it's facing directly downward, then the transfer case is in neutral. If it's facing forward or backward, that means it's either in four high or two high. Since the new motor is preset to be in neutral, we're gonna to need to rotate this here so it's facing straight down. You can use a pair of pliers vice grips, anything like that to rotate it. it. Shouldn't be hard to turn. If it is hard to turn, then stop and double check what's happening. Something might be wrong. Now the transfer case is in neutral. Be really careful, the truck could roll. That's why we chalked it and put the handbrake on earlier. As mentioned earlier, we don't have that locator pin. It would be in here. So we've threaded through the bolt. This is the bolt that goes on the very top. We've got the motor lined up. Now we're just gonna to check to make sure that everything's perfectly flush all the way around. You can see that we're mated well there. And just feel around the perimeter of the motor and just make sure there aren't any gaps. If there are any gaps, that means the motor might not be mated properly to the shaft. And if you start tightening up any of the bolts, you might do some damage. Now I'm just gonna make up that top bolt by hand until it's just finger tight. While you're doing this, just apply a little bit of pressure to the front of the motor, otherwise it might pivot back. We're gonna to torque up the three bolts on the motor encoder to 15 foot-pounds each, starting with the one on top, then the one on the bottom, and then the one in the middle.
And now we plug in the connector. So if you're having any trouble manually setting the transfer case to neutral, there is one other trick you could use. Before you install the transfer case encoder, plug it in to the truck, set it down maybe on this cross beam or whatever, you don't install it yet, then get in the truck, start the ignition, and then whatever gear the transfer case was in when the motor failed, tell the truck to shift into that gear. So if when the motor failed, you were in four high, plug in the motor, get in the truck, tell it to shift to four high, that'll shift the motor to four high, and then when you go to install it, it should align with that shaft. Before we install the drive shaft, we're gonna grease the splines. GM has a specially formulated grease that you're supposed to use for these axle splines. We'll include the part number in the description of the video. Now, we're gonna line up the mark that we made earlier with the mark on the yoke. Slide up the drive shaft, and we're gonna insert it into the transfer case. Remove the tape from the U-joint and be really careful with those bearing caps. You're gonna be really sad if one of these falls off when you're almost done the job. It's definitely never happened to me before. Keep the cap secure. Push the drive shaft towards the back of the truck. Now for the yoke retainers and the 11 millimeter bolts. If you rotate the drive shaft and the yoke, once again, be really careful with those bearing caps. Now we'll torque them to 18 foot pounds. You can use a pry bar to hold the drive shaft still while you're torquing up the bolts. Now we're gonna put a new band clamp on the transfer case side of the front drive shaft boot right here. We're just gonna take a couple of seconds to talk about the different options for band clamps around the end of the axle boot. There are a few different things. You can buy something like this at the um, parts store. It's kind of almost like a metal zip tie. You could use a metal zip tie, some people do. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna do this the right way. We're gonna use the same style as the ones that came off the truck. Now for these, you usually need a special tool uh, some people might be able to get a bit of a workaround using some cutters or a hammer. I'll show you that now in a second. I'm going to show you how this works in this traffic cone. So pretend this is your boot on the end of the axle. You can see these teeth right here. We'll clip into these holes here. So you'd slide it onto the boot. And then clip in those teeth. Now, there's a special tool for finishing this off. The way this works is these two teeth here close and crush it in from the sides. At the same time, this piece here moves up and keeps it nice and flat so it doesn't just kind of fold up on itself like that. Some people might use cutters or something like that. You can give it a try if you have room. You could just come in, crush it, and then maybe hammer it flat. Just like that. All right, now we're gonna put the band clamp on the boot. And now, last step, replace the skid plate. Let's see if she works. 
you can see right here, the transfer case is in neutral right now. Remember we rotated that shaft downward to install the motor. So we're gonna put the transmission in neutral. And then the moment of truth. Too high, good to go. Huh, I'm glad that's done. And he's way dirtier than me, as you can see. So here's the bad guy. Uh, Chris, how did it go? Not too bad, ready to go off-roading. That's right. Uh, so this didn't set a check engine light, where you normally tell you to do a drive cycle. This code will actually reset itself by the computer. You don't need a scan tool to reset it. So you should be good to put this thing right back on the road. Hope this video saved you some time, saved you some money. And if so, like the video and subscribe to our channel, the Blue Driver channel. And until next time, fear no fix.